Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect and a couple weeks ago I made a post asking you what would you like to learn in Photoshop and the top comment here from Malex was how to mix match heads and blend images into other images where they still look natural and it received the most likes. So we had to do it. So thanks to you Malex, we're gonna do the same thing today. We'll learn how to swap heads and also learn some tips and techniques to make it look natural. So without any further ado, I'm super excited. I hope you are too. <laughs> Let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the tutorial, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. So let's have a look at this. We have the head that we're going to use for the body and this my friend is going to be the body. I know you're going to create something creative after this tutorial. I trust you with that. Now when it comes to swapping heads or faces, there are two things we need to keep in mind and these are the prerequisites. If you get these two things right, your face swap or head swap is going to be on point excellent. You don't have to worry so much about color matching or lighting matching or any of that. These are the two important, very important, necessary prerequisites. And those are number one, the angle of the head should match. Have a look at this. He's looking up. Also, he's looking to the left. Similarly, the head that we're going to use is also looking to the left and the camera is at a lower angle. They are very similar. So this will work. So the angle should be similar. Even if he was looking to the right, we could have flipped it. All right. Just make sure that he was looking up or the camera angle was low. So both are happening in this cases. So number one, make sure that the angle of the head is similar. What is number two? Number two is definitely, you might have guessed it, lighting. Now when it comes to lighting, again, there are two aspects to it. Number one definitely is the direction of light. So in this case where he is looking, the light is coming from that direction. Similarly, where he is looking, the light is coming from that direction. If this head was looking to the right and then the light was coming from the left, it wouldn't have worked. So the direction of light should be similar with respect to the head. Make sense? So if he was looking right, the light direction should have been from the right if you were to place this head on this body. Then we could have flipped it and adjusted it. Now, number two aspect of light the hardness or the softness of light should match. You cannot have a head with a soft light to sit on a body with hard light. Now, what do I mean by soft light or hard light? Now, soft light creates soft shadows and hard light creates hard shadows. Think of it this way. The lights usually used to capture bodybuilders where they have to accentuate the shape. Those are hard lights. Hard lights create hard shadows. Where you have to hide the wrinkles or keep the skin even, you use soft lights. Soft light creates soft shadows. Make sense? All right. So in this case, in both the cases, as you can see, there is hard light, thus creating hard shadows and showing all of the shapes and the crevices of the face. Similarly, in this case, it's definitely hard light. So on that front, both of these images pass the criteria. So what did we learn here, my friend? For a successful head swap or a face swap, the choice of images is way more important than the entire editing process. If you've got the lighting right, if you've got the angle right, you don't have to worry about a thing. Now, some of you might go, well, maybe I have to combine only this particular photo with that body. So choose the body you want your head on or anyone else head on and take the photograph accordingly and mimic the lighting setup. That is very essential to do. So just to recap, number one, angle of the head should match. Number two, the lighting should match. Now inside of lighting, there are two aspects to it. The hardness or the softness of lighting should match. Number two, the direction of lighting should match, where the direction should be similar with respect to the face. All right, let's get started with this example. In the face document, simply select the lasso tool and just make a rough selection of the face area. Make sure you also select the shadows associated with it so that it makes it easier for us to create shadows on the new body. Press Ctrl or Command C here. Come to the body document, press Ctrl or Command V. Let's name this layer new face. Simply decrease the opacity to about 50% so that you can adjust it accordingly. Now, before we make any changes, let's not forget to convert this into a smart object. Let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. So that when you make it smaller and then when you make it big again, you don't lose details. Now, let's decrease the opacity to about 50% so that you can adjust it. Press Ctrl or Command T, rotate it, make it smaller and adjust it on top 
of the old head. Once you begin to feel like that your adjustment looks okay, you can increase the opacity all the way to 100 and then even adjust it further. Let's turn off and on the old and the new head to see the differences, whether you want to make it bigger or smaller or make similar adjustments. Now, this is what I'm happy with. Just make sure that both of the lines of the neck match. If I decrease the opacity, you'll be able to notice they're very, very close. It makes it very easy. It's not a necessity, but it just makes the process very easy where the lines and the edges begin to match. Simply create a mask right over here. Take the brush, take a soft round brush with black as the foreground color, flow and opacity at 100, slowly and gradually start to paint on the outside and remove the extras. You could also use your favorite selection method here. It's up to you as to how you want to do it. I'm merging actually the hair here since both hair match a little bit, the colors match. So it makes it a little easier for us. It's more like deep fake, my friend. Whenever you're trying to create a deep fake video, if you have seen that on YouTube, they try their best to match the model with the new head as much as possible with that of the character that they're replacing the head with. Make sense? All right, let's continue our process. Quick tip, stay away from beards. It's kind of complicated. I feel that for the beard area, we can use our hair brushes. So I'll have them for you in the downloads in the description of the video. So I have some amazing hair brushes. So I'm gonna use the hair close intense and let's try this with white as the foreground color. Make sure the mask is selected. And then just try to paint in this hair right there. Maybe sometimes helps. Now this is beginning to look all right. All right, now when you zoom out, it's not a problem anymore. Let's get back to our regular soft healing brush. Now it's time for us to fix this particular area. Erase a little more, and then what you do, you select the hairbrush, hair close intense, and paint this area back with white. That would be enough. Now it is beginning to look all right. Now the shadow shape looks weird, we need to correct that. So simply select the mask, black as the foreground color, flow at 10 or 20%, and correct the shadows, no big deal. So there you go, the adjustment is finally done. Now what do you think we have to do next? We need to match the lighting. The direction of lighting is the same, but the light on the face, on the new face, is a little harsher as it is creating darker shadows. But on the body, the shadows are not as dark as that of the face. Have a look under the beard, it's so dark in here. But look at the shadows of the body it's not as dark. So we can either adjust the face or the body. Now in this case, since we cannot recover much details from the dark areas, let's just darken the shadows of the body. So just above the background layer, create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now we need to darken these shadow areas, right? So you can simply do that with the help of the hand right there. So select the hand and click and drag it down. Now the colors are distracting us. We don't want colors to distract us while we adjust the luminosity of the brightness levels. So at the top, create a luminosity check layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose any color with zero saturation, gray, white, black, whatever. And then change the blend mode from normal to color. This takes away all the colors. Now let's come back to curves and adjust this point right there. This seems to be about right. Now adjust the bright areas as well. So with the help of the hand, Select these bright areas and bring it up. Match that with that of the face. This looks much better. Let's take a look. Here's the before, not matching at all. Here's the after, so much closer. Now it is also time for us to match the lighting or the brightness of the face with that of the body too. Maybe it is the skin tone, but have a look. It is so much brighter than that of the body, so we need to darken it. So at the top of the new face, create another curves adjustment layer. And also we need to clip it to just the face because if we make any changes here, it's also gonna make changes to the body. So click on this button, that way it will create a clipping mask and only the face would be affected. Now, just select the hand right there, click on the bright spot of the face which you wanna darken and just bring it down. Stop at the point where it begins to match with that of the body. This seems to be a good place but we also wanna brighten the shadows a bit because they're also getting too dark. All right, let's take a look. So here's the before, here is the after. So much more closer. Let's take this even more down. Take a look now, here's the before, here's the after. Much closer. Now it is time for us to match the skin tones. First of all, let's turn the luminosity check layer off. Now have a look. The body is too colorful now because of the curves. 
If you don't want the curves to affect the colors, simply change the blend mode from normal to luminosity. See if that helps. Maybe it does look good, maybe it doesn't to me. Actually, it looks weird. The colors look unnatural. Let's keep it at natural. We'll later decrease the saturation. But for right now, we need to match the face with that of the body. So just above the curves adjustment layer, let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then click on hue saturation. Also, we want to limit it just to the face. So simply click on this button to create a clipping mask. And with the help of the hand, click on the hand and then click on the skin tone. We need to match the skin tone here. Take the hue saturation all the way to the right to see which areas are being affected. Now expand the range to make sure all of the skin tone is being affected. So I'm going to expand the range here as well. Just make sure everything is being targeted. Now bring the saturation and the hue back to zero. Now you can adjust the hue to see moving which side helps us. But in this case, I feel that just increasing the saturation would make it match. And have a look, as we increase the saturation, it begins to match. You can also decrease the lightness a little bit. There you go. Now let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, not matching at all. Here's the after, just look at the skin tone. It is so much more matching with that of the body. Now, do you want to match it even more? I've got one more trick for you. But before we do that, I feel that we need to increase the saturation a little more. So I increased it to plus 40, but it's also making the lips and the nose too red. So let's go back to the reds and we want to take it away from the extreme red areas. So we're going to have to play with the range. So increase the hue all the way to the right hand side and just adjust the range so that it doesn't affect the lips and the nose. I'm just moving it like this. All right, that would work. Now let's put the hue back to zero and there you go. It fixes the problem. Now to match it even more, just like we match any other composite, let's apply a global effect. A global effect is something that you apply to the entire image. It can be a curves adjustment layer, a color lookup, a hue saturation, whatever there is, it just has to be an effect that you apply to the entire image. And in this case, I'm going to choose a color lookup table. So let's click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. And for this example, let's choose candlelight. And as you choose that, suddenly everything just begins to match. If you don't want so much of it, you can have a little bit of it. It still helps. So I'm going to keep it at about 50% for this example. And suddenly everything just starts to match. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Nothing is matching. The face is completely different. Here is the after. So I took a little more time to make a little more tweaking to the same adjustment layers. And this is our final result. So that's how to swap heads or faces in Photoshop. Just a quick little recap. The number one thing you have to keep in mind is that the choice of images holds 90% importance for the editing is just 10% or even less. If you've got the right images, Nobody can stop you. And from there, it is just an easy streak. To choose the images, just keep in mind that the angle of the head and also the lighting match. Now, in lighting, the hardness or the softness of the light and also definitely the direction of light should match. This is important, especially also while you're creating a new head for a body. So let's say you have a body and you want to place your face in it. You have to mimic the lighting of that body and then take a photo and then place your head. You cannot just randomly pull out any selfie because then the uh, angle of view would also matter. Maybe you took your selfie with a wide angle lens as most phone cameras have a wide angle lens. And then you have a body builder with a telephoto lens. They will <laughs> never match. It's going to be very difficult for you to do so. So choice of photos are important. After you've got that right, just bring both of them in Photoshop and just take the head with the help of the lasso tool, make a selection around it, bring the head to the new body with the help of the mask, just take away the extras, adjust it. And from there you can use curves to adjust the lighting, hue saturation to adjust the skin tones, and then an overall global effect to match it all together. I hope this video helped you. I hope you had some fun watching and working with this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next fun till then. Stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.